Thomas, we have a lot to talk about, and it's all about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. Verdict came down yesterday, almost a clean sweep for uh, Johnny Depp. I mean, if it was a baseball game, it was almost a shutout. He had a, he had a no-hitter going into the ninth inning, and then he kind of got a base hit when Amber Heard was found to have been defamed by something his attorney, Adam Woolman, said. However, Correct. everything that was in the headline, in the text, was found to be defamatory, um, essentially fake and fraudulent, and she owes probably somewhere around $10 million. There's a lot to unpack here. I think what happened was he was at a strategic advantage. First, he went first in the proceedings. Right. So he got to tell his story first. Right. So that means you're going on offense, just like sports, right? You get the ball first, you try to score first. And I right. do think that he was better coached than she was, whether that was natural or just through rehearsals or whatever. But his point of view, what he brought out was a lot of the psychology of abuse at the hands of his mother. He talked about his childhood. Here you have this movie star up there, and what people love to see is, yes, Johnny, you're a big movie star, but you had a very, very rough life, and so did I. Let me take and care I of And I relate you. to that. Yeah. I relate to that. Yeah. And I think that was something that he did that Amber Heard did not do. She seemed a little more stuck up and not as down to earth and not as relatable. Are those factors that should be determined in truth? Maybe, maybe not, but they are. There was no really, really high-profile voices in full-throated support for Amber Heard. I think a lot of people looked at that testimony, and whether it was the fact that she didn't pay the donation, or whether it was the fact that she acknowledged that she could be violent sometimes, or whether it was just her general demeanor, um, no one was overly enthusiastic about her testimony. Um, and you have to ask yourself, didn't her lawyers see that? I mean, they must have gone, they go through dry runs of these things. Absolutely. It's um, very rehearsed. Yes. Right. And Johnny Depp was very, very effective and very, very good. But maybe a lot of people in Hollywood don't like her behind the scenes. You know how that is. Yeah. You were a celebrity reporter, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And you know how people might say, okay, this person's a big star. I'm not going to say anything bad on the record, but off the record, I can't stand her and I hate her guts. And I think that's some of what might have been going on here. Do you think, I think I still harbor a very naive view that when the doors are closed to the courtroom and mm -hmm. you're in that windowless room, that you are in um, essentially a sanctuary of the law and that only what is uttered within that room becomes what is uh, important in this case. I'm coming to believe that I'm a fool, hmm. that the idea that this jury was not impacted by whether it was the crowds of people outside or whether probably more uh, importantly, the amount of social media going on. They weren't sequestered. They went home every night. They were off for 10 days. They have families and friends. It beggars belief that they were not aware of the unbelievably lopsided social media um, pylon that was going on involving Amber Heard, and that they were not affected by that. He was a movie star up there. And if you're going to have a jury, the idea they're going to be immune to a movie star, and then they're going to go out at night and not hear TikTok, when whether they're doing it themselves or their kids are talking about it or their neighbors are talking about it, and they're not... And again, it's not like it's... It's not like you're hearing about social media and it's 50-50. Right. It's, you know, 90-10. Right. So he's up there. I mean, the first day of the trial, right, which now seems like forever ago, mm -hmm. right? He's up there and you're looking at him and he's basically giving his performance as an actor. On a scale of one to 10, what are you giving him? I'd As him, an actor. I give him an eight. I give him an eight give or an, an eight, eight and a half. Okay. I thought it was good. I personally don't get that. I, I personally find that shtick, his whole thing, kind of annoying. Yeah. But it's been consistent. Yes. And in this particular instance, it worked. He was okay. unflappable. Right. Again, he kept invoking this kind of sense of Southern nobility and yes. doing the right thing. Yes. And even with the vile texts and drunken, coked out behavior, this kind of code of honor was of a piece with the way he was behaving on the stand. Right. Um, and it was of a piece with, you know, when Kate Moss testified, I'm not sure how important that was, but it did put the light on one of the things that, you know, Amber had it said. It was something. It was a ding, for sure. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> and I think that he was just quite effective at it. And they didn't... Yes, he was a drunk, and yes, he did coke, and yes, he cut his finger, and yes, he passed out and had to be cleaned up by his... He wasn't a hypocrite. And hypocrisy, I think, is one of the things that can really cripple you. And whether or not we belabor this pledge thing, there's a degree of hypocrisy there. And I think people are really offended by hypocrisy. What about if the strategy was, yes, Johnny, you're all these things that are not positive, you're, you know, negative in your what you've done and everything like that. But you're going to walk into the courtroom and this is a very, very effective technique. And you're more or less going to be a really humble man as you're bringing up, right? a Southern gentleman, and you're kind of saying in a way, look, people, I'm a mess here. I know it. I'm an actor. I'm in Hollywood. What do you expect from me? But, you know, please forgive me. I'm, I'm really not that guy. I'm really this guy. And that's what I think he was selling. And, okay, and here's your problem. And this goes on in every screen. This, this can go on in Hit every me. drama or every movie or every play. His role was defined. Hers was excellent point. Excellent point is the camera right? getting on who is she? Bump. Who yes. is she? I don't know who she, she had is. no definition. She didn't. She had no character. Her character was not defined in the movie right. the way his character was exactly. Defined. So you have le you have the legal. What's so fat? Why are we so fascinated about this? I mean, is this the second biggest case after OJ that we've ever experienced? Maybe, arguably. arguably, okay, you have Hollywood and the legal system coming together and breaking apart and it's moving in and out and you have a jury that's supposed to be sequestered, but now we have social media and the words you're seeing are TikTok. And you have a man and woman and you have the, the intimate details of a relationship that is both a Hollywood relationship, but also painfully ordinary in its inability to communicate, in its vulnerability, in its degrees of rage and frustration, they're just like everybody they're else. They're just like everybody and else. And that's why this has become what it is. 